we are still on unit four, which is about feeding your cells with the nutrients that your cells need. Um, this is going to be the respiratory system, so about those air molecules that your cells need and also need to get rid of. Um, the respiratory system is in charge of taking care of that. Our goals for this lesson is I want you to be able to label the parts of the respiratory system on a diagram. Diagram how gas exchange happens in the alveoli, that might be a new word. Explain the role of the diaphragm and air pressure with breathing. And then diagram three different types of respiratory issues that humans can have. So just to review again, this is cell cellular respiration. Last time we saw how glucose entered our, our, our mitochondria the, through the digestive system. This time we see that oxygen is a key component to cellular respiration, which gives us the energy that we need. At this moment, we're gonna have you pause again and watch the video. Take a look at the lyrics as you watch the, uh, the video about uh, this song. It's called Breathe, same singer. He uh, does a good job uh, going through the respiratory system. So we'll join me again in a minute. All right, let's continue. All right, now that you've already heard the song, we're going to go through some of the lyrics as we go through this. Um, through the chorus, we actually learn about all the different respiratory system structures. He does a good job about listing them kind of in the order that the air uh, goes through them. Um, so on here, Every, everything that's red um, is probably going to be something that's labeled in the diagram here. And you have a, a diagram here where you can enter some things, um, so do that as we go along here. Um, when we breathe, we pull a, the diaphragm down. We're going to talk about that in a little more, but this diaphragm is kind of a muscular sheet, I guess you could say, that goes up and down. Um, when we see the air going into our nose, obviously we, I didn't make you <laughs> write that down, you know where the nose is, but the pharynx is kind of the back of your throat here. Um, the larynx is your voice box, that's what actually can create a uh, vocal, uh, you ever hear vocal cords, it's kind of like that too. The trachea is your windpipe then, um, and then the bronchus or the bronchi. So then from the trachea, we, it branches out to both of your lungs. And then these bronchioles are like the branches of the bronchi. And then way at the edge, I'm going to show you another diagram here from these bronchial tubes. Way at the edge are kind of like, you know, almost call them like the leaves, but are the alveoli. And you might remember the villi last lesson. The alveoli are kind of like the villi of the lungs in that they have so much surface area. And the more surface area you have, the more diffusion could happen. So also on the diagram on the right side of your notes, you can see alveoli would be, um, you know, basically these kind of pouches. You have the bronchioles that branch to the alveoli. If you want to label these, this would be the blood vessels too. I don't think you have to but the blood vessels run right along the alveoli as well. We'll see a better diagram of that right here. So you see our blood vessels, these would be capillaries going back and forth to your heart. Um, they're lined up with the alveoli as well. And we're going to talk about the reason for that on the next slide. All right, so oxygen transport, that's the name of the game here. We're going to try to transport oxygen from our lungs to our bloodstream because then the heart with the bloodstream can pump that oxygen rich blood to the rest of your body. But first we got to get the oxygen from your lungs that you're breathing in to your bloodstream. So how do we do that? Well the song kind of lists that here. It says each alveolus, that's the singular term for alveoli, has capillaries outside it. And you see these capillaries, these blood vessels that are running along outside of it, through which red blood cells file right by it. So these red blood cells are going through the capillaries. O2 diffuses, or oxygen diffuses into each red blood cell. So let's talk about that with this diagram here. So you see the O2 diffusing. Do you remember that one diffusion uh, activity we did where the, the particles kind of just naturally came to the other side? That's really what's happening here. And what you have is you have a lot of oxygen in your alveoli every time you breathe in. And then that oxygen diffuses to your red blood cells in your capillaries every time you do that. And then you, you're, these blood cells have a lot of CO2 because your cells have been doing cellular respiration. And remember the waste product from cellular respiration is carbon dioxide. 
So these blue, and they're not really blue in real life, just so you know, but these bluer blood cells here have a lot of CO2, and they diffuse the CO2 back to the alveoli. And that's why when you breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide rich air. Um, so because yeah, these have the, the our carbon dioxide and they give that to your alveoli. So we, we kind of call this the great exchange of gases then. CO2 is out, O2 is in. That's what his lyrics say here. So out goes your CO2 from your blood, in comes the oxygen. Here's just another diagram of that happening here. So from your cells we have, you know, um, oh sorry, from your alveoli comes the oxygen, from your red blood cells diffuses the carbon dioxide. So your alveoli diffusing oxygen to the red blood cell, red blood cell diffusing carbon dioxide back to the alveoli. You can even see even a better diagram of this where you have the oxygen molecules as the red blood cells are filing by, the red the oxygen is coming or diffusing, here's an outer picture, but the oxygen is diffusing to these red blood cells. Um, so it's not really like, you know, this is just a natural movement of oxygen into your red blood cells as they file by your alveoli. So where does that go? Let's just talk about the end product then. Well, these red blood cells then, which are have a lot of oxygen, they diffuse the oxygen to your cells. And then this is carbon dioxide. That's diffusing back to the red blood cells um, what from, from all the waste products from your cells. Because remember, when your cell does cellular respiration, it has carbon dioxide as a waste product. So it gives that waste product to your red blood cell. Your red blood cells diffuse oxygen to your uh, body cells as they need it. So uh, just another great exchange of gases happening at your cells then. All right, let's talk about this whole inhaling and exhaling because um, that's in the song quite a bit. Um, it goes through kind of the science of how that works. So we all have a diaphragm, and if you saw in your diagram that you wrote before, that the diaphragm is that kind of sheet of muscle right underneath your lungs. And when he says, pull your diaphragm down, what you do, and that, that's when we inhale. So when we want to breathe in, your diaphragm, your muscle sheet, actually pulls down. And what that does, you see how bigger this chest cavity is than this chest cavity? And when you have a lot of volume, you might know this, your air pressure decreases because there's more space for the air to go. So there's not a lot of pressure. And what it does is it, every time you breathe in, so if you want to try breathing in right now, your lung gets bigger, meaning that there's more space for air to go. And then the air on the outside is kind of like, hey, there's actually plenty of room inside of you. So the air on the outside comes into your lungs because there's more space. And then when you breathe out, what you're doing is your diaphragm is pushing up now. And because of that, you notice how this has much less space? So now the air feels cramped. There's not, there's a whole lot, there's a lot of air pressure now, right? When there's more air pressure, the air wants to leave because, hey, it's, there's now more air pressure here than there is out here. So that's why air leaves when you um, have less air pressure in your lung cavity from your diaphragm going up. This would be another uh, example of that happening here. The diaphragm pushes your lungs smaller and then out comes the air. When your diaphragm pulls down, the air comes in. This is even just a kind of quick exp uh, science experiment you could do, or not experiment, but a simulation. Um, so when this diaphragm gets pushed up, look what happens to the balloons. The balloons lose their air because there's less volume and the pressure is, is greater than it is outside, so the air escapes to the outside. But when you pull this down and you get more volume, air wants to come into those balloons. Let's talk about some respiratory system issues here. Um, so there's three really to go through. The first one is on the left here is asthma. And you probably have heard of asthma and uh, this is a pretty common one. Um, so what happens in asthma is that you get swelling in those bronchioles. Remember the bronchioles are those branches that go out to the alveoli. And you can imagine if there's swelling happening, there's just less um, space for the air to go through. You'll often hear people that uh, experience asthma that they'll say sometimes it feels like I'm breathing through a straw and you can imagine breathing through a straw you just can't get as much air in and out right so often medicines will often target the swelling to keep the bronchioles from swelling. 
Um, that's where often inhalers can do things like that. Pneumonia is kind of a, a, a common sickness that you can get and you often can defeat pneumonia and, and it only be a temporary thing. But what happens with, with pneumonia, it's just kind of an infection. So with infections, if you know, that often involves a lot of fluid. So if you have fluid filling up in your alveoli, what happens then is oxygen can't travel through the fluid. So if you look, only this part of your alveoli still has space to transfer oxygen you basically lost three-fourths of your alveoli. And then if that happens in every single alveoli in your lungs, you're basically only breathing at one-fourth capacity. So breathing becomes very difficult or exchanging gases is very difficult. You might still be doing your movement of your lungs, but the gas exchange just isn't happening. So you're gonna be very tired for that reason because your, your, your cells aren't able to do cellular respiration as much. The last one would be emphysema. emphysema. This is less common but it can happen very often later in life and I have to say it often happens with people who smoke um, so what happens is the walls of your alveoli break down so the blue is actually like a, t a typical healthy alveoli if the walls break down kind of through some you know a lot of smoking or things like that you have kind of a bigger alveoli and what happens is you lose that surface area the more branches you have, the more surfaces where the oxygen can be transported in. When you when they all combine and join here, when the walls break down, there's actually less surface area for the oxygen to come to your cells or, or to your blood vessels to get to your cells. So that's why if you maybe were smoking early on in your life, people besides smokers get emphysema too, but often if you were smoking early on in your life, you might have difficulty breathing later on because you might get emphysema um, from all your alveoli walls breaking down. Well, that's it for this lesson. So let's just re recap. Do you know all of each of these skills for the uh, test later on? Can you label the parts of the respiratory system without looking on a diagram? Do you understand how gas exchange happens in the alveoli and maybe at the cell level too? Can you explain the role of the diaphragm and air pressure changing with causing you to breathe in and breathe out? And then can you diagram the three different types of respiratory issues? So if you feel like you're not quite confident with that, that may be a good thing to study a little bit so that we're ready to go to show me you know what to do.